Good afternoon and welcome to today's Me RIT webinar, part of a series created exclusively for RIT alumni. I'm Lydia Palmer, Senior Director of Marketing and Communications in the Division of Development and Alumni Relations, and I am your moderator for today's webinar. Before we begin, let's take a moment to ensure that everyone is ready and familiar with the presentation tools. All participants in today's webinar have joined in mute mode and cannot be heard during the presentation. However, we absolutely encourage participation. To submit your questions at any time, please enter them in the chat box. The chat box can be opened by clicking on the chat tab at the right of your Livestorm window. We will make every effort to address all your comments and questions throughout the webinar. You are joining today's webinar using broadcast audio. If for any reason you wish to dial in by phone, dial-in information is provided in the chat box. Live captioning is being provided during this webinar and you can find the link to access that in the chat box as well. Note that today's webinar will be recorded and made available complete with captions in approximately two weeks following today's event. All participants will receive an email with the link to the recording. If you have any technical questions, please feel free to type those into the chat box as well, and we will do our best to get you the appropriate answers. And with that, let's get started. Today's webinar is New Year, New You, Jumpstart Your Job Search in 2020. Our guest presenter is Chris Steeler, Assistant Director of Alumni Relations in RIT's Office of Career Services and Cooperative Education. Chris has served, uh, I'm sorry, Chris has served RIT in that important office for 22 years. She is currently working with College of Science, College of Health Sciences, and School of Individualized Studies students and alumni. In addition, she manages career services and programming for RIT alumni, including providing our team with the alumni job of the week and career updates that you see in our official RIT Alumni Association LinkedIn group. As an aside, if you are not a member of that group, I urge you to request access to get these updates. Chris holds a BS in Business Administration with a concentration in HR Management from SUNY Empire State College and an MS in Counseling from the University of Rochester, where she focused on career counseling. She is passionate about using her skills as well as the technology resources of the office to help guide students and alumni toward the fulfillment of their professional development. Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. Chris is joining us remotely, uh, so please do let us know if there are any issues with the audio. Uh, but Chris, take it away, our audience is all yours. Thank you, Lydia. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome again to our webinar. This presentation will provide information on our office and the career services that we provide to RIT alumni. And then I'll also share some tips for jumpstarting a job search and moving towards your career and job search goals. Please feel free to ask questions at any time during the webinar. So again, I'm Chris Steeler, and I manage the alumni career services and programming within the Office of Career Services and Cooperative Education. Let's start by talking about our services. All RIT alumni have free access to all our career programs and services for life. And we'll go into detail about all of these now. Many of our programs are online, but if you are in the Rochester area, feel free to take advantage of our on-campus career programs and networking events. And these are all posted on our website. We're located in the Bausch & Lomb Center and are open standard business hours. You can come to our office for advising and career counseling and participate in employer networking or meet and greet events and on-campus interviews. Our career fairs are also open to all alumni in the area. Well, let's talk more about our services in detail. Individual advising is available for any job search related concern or question. There's an advisor in our office for every major or career field and they're a good resource for things like resume and portfolio reviews, interviewing practice, including an in-depth mock interview if you'd like, helping you work out a specific strategy for your search, and providing resources that will be helpful for your specific industry or field. They can go through our handshake job system with you to make sure you're using it effectively for your search. And since networking is such an important part of any job search, the advisors can help you develop an effective networking plan 
and show you how to make valuable connections with RIT alumni and employers. All advising can be done in person, or if you're not in the area, we can work with you by phone, email, or Skype. We also offer daily drop-in hours for quick questions, either in person or by phone. If you're interested in changing your career or aren't sure in what direction you'd like to go, schedule a session with one of our career counselors. Through a combination of assessment, testing, and discussion, they can help you determine potential options for making a shift to a new career that matches your values, strengths, and interests. They also have resources and information on graduate schools and the application process. For longer term or more in-depth work, our personalized coaching service can connect you with a professional career coach. Our career coach partners have been screened by our office and they often share their advice through workshops and panels. This is a fee-based service, but discounts are offered to RIT alumni. No matter where you are in your career, coaches can help you take the next steps in developing and better managing your career. Our website is an important part of our services. Here we've compiled comprehensive information related to job search and career management topics, including webinars and presentations specifically tailored to RIT alumni, a calendar of upcoming events, and access to our handshake system. Handshake is our online job and career management system. We have revised our university-wide login procedure for alumni and have moved to a single username and password for all RIT online systems, including Handshake. All alumni have to use a newly created RIT account to access their Handshake account. So to create a new RIT account, just go to start.rit.edu and click on the alumni access link and then follow the instructions. Once you've created a new account, then you can log into your Handshake account using your username and your new at rit.edu email address. Here's a brief overview of the highlights of Handshake. This system allows you to easily find jobs and companies. You can create a comprehensive profile and upload documents like resumes and cover letters, which you'll use to apply to posted positions. Though we are a college and many of the jobs in Handshake are posted for students and new graduates, you should know that currently there are over 5,000 jobs posted for alumni. So this system should definitely part, be part of any of your job search resources. You also have access to the over 200,000 employers who utilize Handshake through the employer database, which you can sort by industry and geographic location. The system also offers a personalized experience, similar to Netflix or Spotify. So the more complete your profile and career interests are, then the more you search for jobs, the more customized your results become, with Handshake suggesting potential opportunities and making specific recommendations. I put together a mini webinar on our alumni career website that has more detailed information on using Handshake, so feel free to review that. Alumni are welcome to attend all our career fairs. We have two general fairs each year in the fall and spring, with a number of smaller fairs targeted to specific majors and fields throughout the year. The next spring fair, by the way, is Wednesday, February 26th. Fairs are a great resource for jobs, as well as opportunities to expand your network. We also post information on local fairs on our website and recommend that you look for career and job fairs in your area as well. Professional associations and community groups often hold events. All information regarding all our fairs, including dates, attending companies, preparatory workshops, and company information sessions is on our website. On Handshake, you can do a detailed search of attending companies to map out your strategy and determine who you want to approach during the fair. Again, as we're a college, many recruiters come with the intent of hiring students for co-ops or internships or those who will graduate. However, if you talk with them, you'll often be able to find out about opportunities for experienced alumni or other contacts within the company with whom you could follow up after the fair. The day after the fair is an interview day for companies who choose to stay, so you may get interviews as well. For more information and tips on career fairs, 
please see our mini webinar, How to Work a Career Fair for Alumni, on our Alumni Career website. We offer comprehensive career programming for alumni to help get you prepared for your job search and to facilitate networking connections to our employers and other alumni. All our events and programs are listed on the Alumni Career Programs page of our website. Of particular note is our 21-day Alumni Career Challenge. This virtual program challenges you to move your career forward towards the job you want. The program provides information, resources, guidance, and support for your job search within a structured format. Review our daily tips focused on a key area of career or job search management, including quick tips that can add up to a big change. So by doing a little every day, you'll be able to build your career confidence and increase your motivation. And all information is on our alumni career website. So we invite you to take control of your career, strengthen your focus, and equip yourself with the tools and techniques for a successful job search one day at a time. I'd also like to point out our experts webinar series. This is also accessed through our alumni career website and provides an annual slate of on-demand webinars featuring the nation's top career authors and experts to share tips, tools, and best practices that will help you manage your career and job searches. Join your fellow alumni each month for a talk that can help you build or maintain a successful career strategy. There are five different categories geared towards every stage of career development. Career search offers job search specific topics, Career discussions includes topics on workplace and career success. Career skills focuses on developing crucial soft and power skills. Career encores provides information for those of us looking for an encore or our next career. And Career Camp offers valuable information for students and new graduates on successfully finding that first job. You can listen live or access the archive recordings at any time. And the link is here, but again, you can find that on our website. An important goal of our office, as we mentioned, is to help you grow your network because networking is still the number one way to get a job. In terms of networking groups, there are a wide variety available, both online and in person. First, take advantage of online groups, such as those found on LinkedIn. We encourage you to join our LinkedIn group called RIT Career Services as well as all the RIT alumni groups, a general one and ones for each college. You can now actually join up to 100 groups on LinkedIn, so take advantage of this resource to really expand your network. LinkedIn also allows you to search for RIT alumni by going to the RIT page and clicking the alumni button. You can then reach out to make a networking connection. Alumni are usually eager to connect and provide information and advice to other alumni as long as you don't ask them for a job directly. Your career advisor can suggest other resources for networking within your targeted industry and field, including relevant professional associations. We also offer company meet and greet events and networking events with employers and alumni throughout the year. These are often around our career fairs. And examples of these include the Saunders College of Business and the College of Science networking event. So now let's turn to some of my top tips for jumpstarting your job search. This is meant to be an overview just to get you started and there's going to be a lot of information. But remember we're available to discuss any of these in more detail in an individualized appointment. And in some cases I put together webinars on different topics which are available on demand on our alumni career website. So first, to determine where you are with your search. If you've been in a job search for a while, it's always good to do an assessment of the search process itself, taking a look at what's been working and what hasn't in terms of return on investment for your efforts, and also where you feel most stuck in the process. If you're just starting a search, a review of the job search process and resources you will use will help you conduct an organized, effective search. Consider the questions listed here, and be honest with yourself about any obstacles whether perceived or real, that might be holding you back from achieving success. After this assessment, you'll be able to move forward with a fresh attitude, ready to maximize your job search. 
A successful job search follows a plan with specific steps and goals. Too many job seekers just throw together a resume and start applying to all the jobs they can find, thinking that if they apply to enough jobs, they're bound to get results. A better approach is to start at the beginning. Determine your goals or what you want to achieve right now and work through the steps that will get you there. And we're going to discuss each of these steps in detail now. Conduct an organized job search. An organized job search contains the elements listed here. You really have to project plan and manage your search as you would any other major project that you undertake. The self-assessment and research you will do should provide you with a focus or a targeted goal that you're moving towards with all your search activities. Organization is key to keeping you focused. So whatever method of organization works best for you, whether it's keeping paper records and logs or using a computer database and spreadsheet, rely on this to help manage your search activities. I actually just heard about a product called Airtable which is one of several options available online that allows users to set up spreadsheets to track important information. And you can use a template already created for job searches. You can easily set parameters that make dropdowns to record updates quickly. And email integration allows you to send any emails to employers in your table. This free account also allows you to share your aid to air table and collaborate with other people or receive feedback on your job search process. Manage your time well by keeping a calendar filled with your activities, including networking appointments, time for research, applying for jobs, and follow-up. Keeping your tasks spot on your calendar will help keep you focused. Break tasks into manageable steps or individual action items. They will be less overwhelming this way. Set SMART goals. In other words, make them specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Take time to evaluate your activity and efforts regularly. Celebrate your accomplishments, even if they seem insignificant to you. And determine if what you've been doing is moving you towards your targeted goal. If something is not working, why not? And how can you change things to get back on course? Here are some tips for your job search plan. Remember, a job search is really a full-time job in itself, and it takes constant time and effort. It helps if you take the time to create a schedule, putting all activities into your calendar, and then sticking to that schedule. Set specific tasks to accomplish on both a daily and a weekly basis. Take advantage of technology and automate your tasks where you can. Things like news feeds and alerts, and search agents that you can set up ahead of time to notify you about jobs and also news items on your targeted companies can leave you more time for other activities like networking. Focus on the task itself. You will have good and bad experiences throughout this process. And if you take things personally and focus on the fear, maybe of going to a networking event and talking to strangers, you'll be more apt to avoid doing things that may help you. Don't take anything personally and just keep going. It can also be helpful to do what you enjoy first and save tasks you don't like for specific times during the week. Again, plan and schedule these so you can't avoid them altogether. Doing what you enjoy can give you the confidence to accomplish your less palatable tasks. Self-assessment is key to your overall job search plan. If you understand your strengths and skills, you can work more effectively and productively and enjoy what you do. You'll be better able to identify the type of work that will allow you to perform at your best, and you'll have the confidence to sell yourself to your targeted companies. So before choosing a career field, company, or job, take some time for self-assessment. In doing assessment, start by making an inventory of the categories you see here. Interests, values, talents, skills, strengths, weaknesses even, and accomplishments. Once you've determined who you are and what you have to offer, you can better determine where you'll fit in and better to conduct a targeted job search. Remember there are resources available to help you do a more formal and in-depth self-assessment, including our office career counselors and the personalized coaching referral service that I mentioned earlier. Next, brand yourself. It's important 
to have a consistent and solid brand that best represents what you have to offer employers. And you have to be comfortable and confident of your brand to successfully sell it to others. So in simple terms, your brand is who you are and what you have to offer. It's the perception that other people have of you compared with similar people. And we know that companies use branding to sell their products. When you think of Nike or Coke, you immediately know what the attributes and qualities of those products are and why you would want to buy them or not. The same holds true with you and your brand. You want to stand out as the best candidate for the job. You have to target your brand to the industry, field, and even the type of position you want. So you'll need to determine the target audience and what they're looking for so your brand can be a good match for their needs. Branding then becomes building a name and a reputation for yourself, showcasing what sets you apart from the competition and describing your added value. Your brand is comprised of your skills, your strengths, your values, your passions and goals, and especially your differentiation or what sets you apart from others that offer similar values. So once you determine these from your self-assessment, you'll put them all together to create your branding statement or a summary of who you are and the value you provide. Remember that your branding needs to be consistent throughout all aspects of your search. All of your marketing materials, including your resume, cover letters, LinkedIn profile, 60 second commercial or elevator pitch, any other social media you use like Twitter and Facebook, and then in your interviews as well. You need to be a complete, consistently branded package. Check your marketing materials. Be sure they are consistent to your brand and are the best representation of your qualifications as they relate to your targeted industry, field, and the companies you apply to. We won't go into details on each specific material here, but you can discuss any questions you have with your career advisor and remember, we have more in-depth information on our website and through other webinars on these topics. In general terms, though, you want your resume to be specifically targeted to each company you apply to, especially at the experience level. Start with a profile or summary of qualification section instead of an objective, and focus on your accomplishment. You want to demonstrate a record of success. Cover letters should be targeted as well and match your qualifications to the job so that the company can see you in that position. Your LinkedIn profile and your profile on any other social media you use, including again Facebook and Twitter, should be branded using the headline and summary areas to emphasize your strengths as they relate to your targeted field and that you're differentiating yourself from others. Fill your profiles with relevant keywords that ensure you'll be found by recruiters. Find and develop the appropriate supporting materials for your field and be sure they enhance your brand and qualifications. Develop a powerful elevator pitch or 60 second commercial that introduces you and your brand, tells where you've been, why you've been successful, and where you want to go right now. You're gonna use this form uh, in all networking situations and sometimes even during interviews when the recruiter asks you to tell me about yourself. Be sure that your interview skills are polished. If you've been out of the job search for a while, it's important to practice so that you sound confident and, again, able to sell your brand. We can definitely do a mock interview with you if you'd like. I would like to say a few more brief words about your resume. A study by a group called The Ladders shows that recruiters take only 7.4 seconds for a first review of a resume to see if it looks for the review. If the resume makes it to the next step, then the recruiter will spend as much time as it takes to evaluate the qualifications shown in your resume. But first, your resume has to be good enough to get to this next step. When you first graduate, you may only have one resume that's very general and that you use for every job that you apply to. Many people continue to use this form of resume, just continuing to add more experiences when they search for all future jobs. Today, however, this is not an effective strategy and does not often yield positive results. Successful resumes, by comparison, are very targeted to each industry, career field, type of position, and company in which you're interested. By tailoring your resume, you're able to tell a compelling story to demonstrate your passion and emphasize the value you will add to the company. Again, 
always remembering to differentiate yourself from the competition and demonstrating your expertise as it relates to the specific needs of each industry or field. Effective resumes also focus on your accomplishments and achievements supported by metrics whenever you can, not just your general duties and responsibilities. Keep ATS or applicant tracking systems in mind and load your resume with the keywords for your targeted job. Remember that when you're looking for a job, you're trying to sell yourself to prospective employers and that your resume is your primary initial selling or marketing tool. The last job search tool we're going to talk about briefly is a marketing plan. Now this is comparable to a business plan for a company. It's a plan for selling a product, which in this case happens to be you. A marketing plan addresses the key points of marketing yourself, which are product and placement and is your strategy to get from thought to action. It combines your qualities, skills, and competencies with some targeted industries and companies from your research. Your marketing plan offers your unique selling proposition. What's in it for the employer? What can you do for them? What are they buying? And what challenges can you provide a solution for? It's your clear value proposition. Here you'll see the components of a marketing plan. It's not a resume, but it has some of the same elements. It's more of a strategic document. In addition to the components listed here, you should also have a clear idea of your targeted compensation based on research. You should determine your bottom line, your desired compensation, and the market average for your targeted geographic area, job type, and your level of skill, abilities, experience, and knowledge. You're going to use your marketing plan in several ways. It's a good way for you to keep track of your targeted companies and your activities. Also, when you network, you can show it to your contacts to let them know your goals and ask for suggestions on different companies or contacts. And in this case, you might want to leave off your salary information. If anyone would like a sample marketing plan, just email and let me know. I recommend that you secure at least 10 references so that you can choose the most appropriate three to four for each job you apply to. They should be a mix of supervisors, past or current, and coworkers from your jobs and even from volunteer experiences, and maybe even faculty if you're a recent graduate, who can all speak to different aspects of your skills and qualifications. Be sure you always check first to make sure people are willing to provide a positive reference for you. If you don't ask, you may find people have a different opinion of you than you thought they did, and they may give negative information to employers. In fact, it's good to ask references exactly what they would tell a prospective employer about you so that you'll know in advance. Manage your references by keeping them up to date on your skills and accomplishments, letting them know what jobs you've applied to and that they might get contacted by employers, and by grooming them to determine exactly what they'll say about you to each specific employer. People have actually lost jobs through negative references, so keep control of this important aspect to your search. Instead of randomly applying to every job you see, be strategic and target those companies that best match your goals, skills, and qualifications. And this goes back to the self-assessment that you did. Once you have your list of targeted companies, you'll want to do intensive research before you apply. You want to find out everything you can about the company, the products and services, the company culture and environment, recent news items, their outlook and future plans, and what type of employee they typically hire. This will enable you to determine where and how you will best fit in and how you'll be able to help contribute to the company's success. You want to use every available research resource to conduct your research. And it's best, of course, to begin with a company website. Dig deep to find out all you can, including reviewing all post positions, as this will give you the best idea of their preferred type of employee. Also use industry reports to gain a sense of how the company fits into their industry. Professional associations will give you information on the company and the employees that are part of that association. Research sites like Glassdoor and Hoover's have great information. And don't forget the RIT library at library.rit.edu. 
They have a wealth of company research resources available for alumni, many that you can access remotely, and the librarians there are very helpful as well. Through Handshake, you have access to the Vault Guides as well. LinkedIn is another great resource for research. Companies have pages, and you can search for RIT alumni at the company with whom you can do informational interviews. Once you are confident that a company fits your overall goals, you can then add it to your marketing plan and strategize about how you will find connections that will lead to a job. A very important tip for your job search is to be sure to follow up appropriately. You want to control your follow-up instead of passively waiting for a response from employers. So here are some key follow-up activities. Call or email after you send your resume if you have a contact name. This allows you to further promote yourself, to make a personal connection, and to inquire about opportunities for an interview. This doesn't always work, but taking the initiative when you can can often make the difference in your candidacy. Be sure to send a thank you note after all interviews and to all people who interview you. And this should be done within 48 hours of the interview and can be done through email or sent through regular mail. This lets you not only express appreciation for the interview, but to reiterate your top strengths and why you're the best candidate for the position. You should send thank you notes to your informational interview contacts as well. You also want to keep in contact with your informational interview contacts. Update them on your progress, and especially let them know if you've done something that they suggested. And then also see how you can help them. Remember, networking is a two-way street. Make sure you are using all available resources for your job search. Many people just apply to posted positions and wait to be contacted. A job search should be a proactive process involving many varied resources, some of which are shown here and which we'll discuss in more detail. First, of course, the importance of networking can't be overemphasized. Everyone you know or knew at some point should be considered a potential contact. Social networking has become a very important resource. Some recruiters source all their candidates from LinkedIn and other social media. So you need to be conversant with the top sites and know what they offer for job seekers. Don't forget recruiters as well, third party or headhunters, contract and consulting agencies, and even temporary agencies for your industry can be a source of opportunities. Online job listing sites can be a resource, definitely, just not your only one. Use general sites like Indeed and Handshake and also industry specific sites. Career or job fairs are a good opportunity to connect and network with companies. Company websites often list available positions, and you can do other research that may lead you to connections within the company to pursue for potential opportunities. And don't forget newspapers, not just the one ads, but the business section to learn more about companies who may be moving into the area or expanding, and then trade association magazines as well. Professional associations often list jobs just for their members and also allow you to connect with other members for networking that can lead to opportunities. So let's go into a little more detail about some of these now. We talked earlier about the RIT career fairs. And so some people think that career fairs are just for students if they're at RIT or that there will be too much competition if they're local fairs. But remember, you have to do everything when searching for jobs, and fairs are another resource. It's how you approach them that will make the difference to your success. I recommend going to a fair with a specific goal. For example, talking with at least three companies, either about available jobs or about getting a contact name that you can follow up with in a specific department. These then become three contacts that you didn't have before that may lead to a potential opportunity in the future. And don't forget to talk with other attendees also, especially alumni. Every contact counts. In addition to RIT career fairs, take advantage of other appropriate career and job fair options. Most communities hold job fairs regularly that are open to the public. This is a good way to expand your network, get information on companies, and talk with recruiters about openings relevant to your skills and experience. Professional associations often offer career or job fairs for their members, which is another good reason for joining industry associations. In Rochester, for example, Tech Rochester 
which is an association for people interested in computing and technology, regularly holds networking and job fair events for their members. Companies sometimes hold job fairs at their location, generally open to the public. In Rochester, Paychex is an example. You can find out about these through Handshake, through advertisements and business publications, and by following companies in whom you're interested on LinkedIn and Facebook. Organizations, associations, and companies will also sometimes hold virtual career fairs in which you'll go to a specified website and submit resumes to participating companies. And for those who qualify, AARP, the American Association of Retired Persons, holds job fairs for their membership in different locations across the country. And you may find other career and job fairs in your own community, so make sure you keep your eyes open. It's a good idea to work with at least one professional recruiter, even though this is more of a passive resource. Whether they're called headhunters, third-party recruiters, consulting agencies, or contracting companies, reputable search professionals have access to companies and jobs that you won't find elsewhere. Many companies use a recruiter to source all their jobs, so connecting with a recruiter will give you access to these opportunities. There are recruiters for each industry or field, so once you decide on your targeted area, then you can find a recruiter. And you can find them using online directories, through LinkedIn, and there by doing a people search using the keyword box, and also by looking at online job listing sites, as many of their jobs are posted by recruiters. For example, if you're looking for computer jobs, you can go to dice.com and view the jobs posted by recruiters. And if you see jobs you're interested in, you can contact the recruiter and begin the relationship. Remember, it's important to work with a reputable recruiter, so interview them to see who they work with and don't hesitate to ask for references. Remember, though, that recruiters work for the companies, not the individual job seekers, because these are the people who pay them. So they're only going to be interested in you when you match one of the jobs they're hiring for. Also, some recruiters will ask you to revise your resume to their specific format. So you have to be persistent when working with a recruiter, but they can be a good resource. Just don't rely on them exclusively in your search. Use social networking as part of your job search. The job search process has really changed in the past few years. Companies are discovering that it's easier to post positions and that they're better able to target qualified candidates on social networking sites like LinkedIn and through their company Facebook and Twitter pages. Indeed, some companies post their job openings solely on social networking sites. Additionally, recruiters are able to connect with potential employees through their social networking connections in kind of a referral process, which takes away an element of the unknown about a candidate. On the candidate side, your ability to promote yourself and network online demonstrates that your technical abilities are current. Social networking sites also give you the ability to differentiate yourself in a variety of ways highlighting your skills and accomplishments to prospective employers beyond just a traditional resume. Again, we all know that networking is the number one way to find a job. Social networking sites allow you to develop connections with companies, contacts, and recruiters, all of which you can then use in your search for the perfect job. I recommend you become conversant with at least LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook, and possibly even Instagram in your job search. Find out whatever is most appropriate for your targeted field. Here are key, key ways to use social media in your job search. First, create strong profiles. These should be loaded with keywords for your targeted industry and job, and with supporting materials that reinforce your qualifications. You can add your resume, you can add articles you've written, relevant projects, really anything that showcases your brand and differentiates you from the competition. Find and connect with the key people for your industry, including companies you're targeting, industry influencers, RIT alumni, HR and recruiting managers if you can find them, and professional associations. And then be active on social media. Share articles that you found, comment on discussions, and ask influencers for informational interviews and advice. And finally, take advantage of any job information on the sites. LinkedIn has a searchable job section, 
Twitter and Instagram have hashtags, and Twitter has a job site called Tweet My Jobs. You may have heard that 70 plus percent of all jobs are found through networking. Many of these opportunities are not even posted anywhere. This is what we call the hidden job market. Companies would rather hire based on someone's personal recommendation. So the larger your network is, the better your chances of getting on the right people's radar so that when there are openings, they think of you. So it's essential to develop and maintain your network of contacts with a goal of finding contacts within your targeted companies so that you can get at those hidden jobs. More importantly, you'll want to connect with the key decision makers for your targeted jobs within those companies and not just the HR person. Once you determine your targeted companies from your self-assessment and company research, you can set about finding those key contacts. And there are many resources for finding key people. The RIT Alumni Network allows you to search an extensive database of RIT alumni by a number of criteria, including company, and then to reach out for networking purposes. Professional associations are a wealth of connection opportunities, and don't forget any community or volunteer organizations that you're part of. You never know when you will connect with someone who can give you a lead into one of your targeted companies. LinkedIn, again, is also great for networking, especially with other RIT alumni. So again, on the RIT page, click the alumni button and search by different criteria. You can even search by company so that you can find alumni to connect and network with in your targeted companies. And once you're connected, you can hopefully make your way through the company to get to the hiring manager. If you're inexperienced or uncomfortable with the idea of networking, as many of us are, here are some tips that may help. Create an organized strategy with clear goals and expectations and a specific plan and action items or tasks. Once you do that, these just become part of your overall job search strategy that you have to accomplish. Set clear and appropriate goals and expectations for each networking activity. For example, if you're going to a networking event, say that you will stay for an hour and meet at least three new people with the hope of connecting with someone who works at the XYZ company or knows someone who does. In building your network, don't forget to reconnect with people you may have lost touch with old friends, all your family, former colleagues, even former classmates. And again, here is where RIT alumni can be helpful. Use every opportunity to grow your network. Go to events you wouldn't normally attend and really stretch yourself. Network virtually as well as in person. Be creative about connecting and meeting. Overall, remember that your networking should be strategic and purposeful with a clear goal in mind that you should focus on developing relationships instead of just asking for help, that you should always think about how you can help your networking contacts too, and that when in a job search, you should always have a networking mindset. And that means that no matter your situation, ask yourself if this can be an opportunity to develop or grow your network. I can't overemphasize the importance of joining a professional association for your industry or field. And I've talked a lot throughout this presentation about all the benefits of belonging to an association. These include the chance to grow professionally through conferences and other knowledge-based resources, and especially the chance to connect with like-minded people in your field for networking. The more you participate, the more members will get to know you and will feel comfortable recommending you for opportunities as they become available. Find professional associations by doing a Google search, by seeing what organizations alumni are involved in through their LinkedIn profiles and through recommendations by people in your field. And your career advisor can make specific recommendations as well. So I talked earlier about all of our resources, advisors, and programs, all of which are designed to help you achieve job search success. So don't hesitate to use us. When in a job search, think outside the box and don't be afraid to explore alternatives to a regular full-time job in a company. So volunteering gives you a chance to expand both your skills and your network. These days, there are many alternatives to full-time work, including short-term consulting, contracting, freelance, and project work. 
And these are a few places that I've found that offer those opportunities. Job sharing might be an alternative at some companies. And you may want to even explore starting your own business with your expertise. There may be more opportunities in nonprofit organizations or government agencies than in companies as well. See if you can solve a problem that a company has by doing research and talking with alumni at the company and approaching them with a solution. This helps demonstrate your initiative and prove your abilities. And if you're older, AARP has a lot of job searching resources specifically for this population. And do some investigating within your desired industry or field. There might be other opportunities specific to that area that will allow you to at least get your foot in the door. Like most things, much of a job search deals with your attitude, how you present yourself to the outside world, and how mentally prepared you are for the challenges you will face. So these next tips address this important area. First, be honest and ask yourself what kind of a search you're conducting. Are you being proactive, using all the resources we've discussed, seeking out the hidden jobs, and constantly expanding your network? Or are you passively responding to posted jobs and just waiting for replies? The effort you put into your job search determines the results that you will get out of it. When in a job search, you must always present yourself in a positive way, even though you might not be feeling particularly positive, energized, or enthusiastic. Again, you never know when you will meet someone who will lead you to your next job, so you will always have to be prepared. Have a positive attitude with no negativity towards your situation, and especially not to your former employers. Prepare what you will say if and when someone asks you how you feel, what happened to your last job, or anything related to your job situation. Prospective employers will be looking for resilience and your ability to handle adversity. Take the opportunity of unemployment to update your professional image, get a makeover, update your wardrobe, and also to update your skills and maybe learn some new ones that are relevant to your field or industry. Project confidence, and this comes from being comfortable with your brand and all related marketing materials. Be prepared to address any potential concerns prospective employers may have. If you meet them head on, instead of trying to cover anything up, they will be less of an issue. And here are some tips to help you adopt a new attitude in your job search. Look at this time as an opportunity to expand and grow professionally and personally instead of just finding a job. Use your expertise and experience to become a key leader in your field, finding ways to share your insights, ideas, and trends. Increase your visibility in your profession and your community. Here are some ways to do that. Is this your time to launch a business of your own? Expand your focus and keep abreast of new industries that can use your skills. In other words, don't limit yourself with the idea that you have to get the same job at a different company. You may be trying to replace a position that no longer exists. Offer to help colleagues and take the focus off of you and your job search. Adopt a wider outlook. In helping others, you may eventually help yourself. And don't expect your contacts to keep an eye out for you and your career. Ask them for something specific, maybe a referral to one of their contacts or advice on or further information about a trend in the industry that, that they might know more about. And this tip goes along with breaking into the hidden job market by becoming someone who gets noticed by people in your field. Here are some ways to get noticed, and many of them are online through various social media sites. First, again, have a strong profile loaded with keywords for your industry because recruiters searching the sites are looking for those keywords and the closer a match you are, the more you will be found. LinkedIn and Twitter also offer the opportunity to demonstrate your expertise by contributing to or starting group discussions and commenting on posts by key players in your industry. So if you're online, don't just lurk, participate. Professional associations are great opportunities to get noticed, both in person by taking a leadership or volunteer position and by attending and participating events but also online by contributing to the association's website or newsletters that they might put out. And don't forget your volunteer organizations, which are a great place to get noticed by volunteering for a leadership role or by solving a problem that you see that they have. And my last tip is to encourage you to acknowledge and admit 
what might be holding you back in your job search, and to find ways to deal with these obstacles. So really, this is a soul-searching thing, to think about what is really keeping you from achieving success in your job search. Some common obstacles might include ageism or a fear of being discriminated against due to your age. Maybe you have a fear of the job search process in general. Maybe a fear of rejection. Maybe you're an introvert like me and you don't like to network. Procrastination could be another common obstacle. Maybe you're just feeling overwhelmed and not knowing how to get started or you're getting stuck at a certain step or you might have other obstacles on your own that we haven't talked about. But it's important to realize just how much your attitude affects your success or lack of success. Recognizing the obstacles is the first step to overcome them. Your advisor in our office can help in this process as well to kind of unstick you. Make sure you do use your support system as well. All of your family and friends, they are all there for you when you're in the job search mode. Members of your professional association, your colleagues, and former coworkers. If you're feeling depressed, you might need counseling. Don't hesitate to take advantage of all the resources that are available to you. And I wanted to say a few words about a common concern about more experienced job seekers. Many experienced candidates are worried about being perceived as overqualified and or too old. However, companies have very legitimate concerns about any worker they hire and invest in, and sometimes with especially, especially with older workers. Here are some of their common concerns. So it's important for you to recognize these potential concerns and address them head on with an attitude and responses that are honest and show your determination to get the job. For example, if you know that the company is comprised of mostly young people, you can prepare an answer that shows how you're able to take direction or have taken direction previously from a younger person and that your experiences and accumulated knowledge will be of added benefit to help their team success. Keep these things in mind when selling yourself to a recruiter. Remember, attitude is everything. Maintain a positive, enthusiastic attitude that shows you're focused on the future and not stuck in the past. Show you're keeping current with technology and that you enjoy learning. Emphasize your skills, not the, just the ones that directly relate to the job, but also the transferable skills you've gotten from previous job and life experiences. For example, communication, leadership, teamwork skills are always valued. Emphasize all your experiences. For example, a leadership role in a volunteer organization is valuable also. If you're more experienced, keep that positive attitude and emphasize the qualities you have that will be valued by an employer. You have a history of dedication, commitment, and maturity that a new graduate just does not have. Combined with flexibility and openness to new situations, this makes you a valuable candidate, and if you believe it, you can convince prospective employers also. To allay concerns that you won't stick around or feel challenged in the role, be upfront and clear with the hiring manager. Tell them exactly why you want the job and your motivation, and let them know you have every intention of taking the job seriously. Ask the manager what they're looking for in their perfect candidate so you can gain insight into what qualities and skills the employer is looking for and alleviate the concerns that they have. It will be hard to stay motivated all the time, but rely on your support system to help you stay positive. Keep your regular routine and your life outside of the job search. Eat, sleep, exercise, and socialize as you normally would. You will also experience rejection, so have a plan to deal with it. It's okay to grieve, but don't let it hold you back from future job search activities. To the extent that you can, also try to get feedback that will help you become a stronger candidate. And remember, our office is here to support you through your job search. So if a job or career change is in your plan for 2020, hopefully these tips will help you jumpstart your search. And please feel free to contact me at any time if you'd like career or job search assistance. And that's all I have. All right, terrific. Thank you so much, Chris. We really appreciate you joining us today. Um, as Chris has generously uh, offered up her email and her phone number, again, we will reiterate uh, that uh, anyone who is in the process of 
a job search or a career change should certainly give the career services office a call or contact them or view their website. We've posted that in the uh, chat box as well. Uh, there is just a wealth of information available in that area to help you continue to grow professionally. And uh, that is our webinar for today. Thank you, Chris, for joining us. And thank you to our audience as well. Uh, we invite everyone to join us one week from today on Wednesday, December 18th for our next webinar, which is Celebrate Food, Mindful Eating During the Holidays. I think we can all use that just before the uh, Christmas holiday season comes. So our presenter will be Kirby Branciforte, registered dietitian and nutritionist, and a 2012 alumna from RIT's Nutrition Management Degree Program. Kirby is the corporate nutritionist for Wegmans Food Markets. Thank you all again for joining us today. Please exit the webinar by simply closing your live storm window. And please do let us know what you thought of the webinar through a brief survey that you will receive through your email. Thank you all so much and have a great day.